All right, thank you very much for joining us <coughs> again. So we're continuing. So we have this output that we're scratching our brain, we're saying, what's going on? Why is it always failing? I'm ignoring uh, at the end that touching the Visual Studio had an influence on the application. That's, I would have to think a bit about it and we'll discuss later on what the 14 stands for. In any case, in any case, we're not able to hear anything. So what's going on? I mean, okay, so we're polling the graph, asking it, all right, get, give me event, give me event, give me an event, give me an event. All right, so it's saying, I have nothing to give you. That's what EOBoard says. That's a failure value. But why am I not able to hear anything? That's a good question. In any case, what I'm going to do is, see this variable, well, we, we did not discuss, much of, the, of this code we have not yet discussed, so let me discuss it in very quickly. So we're telling the p-event, which is of type, let me, let me, no, let me do, close the output, let me show you, let me scroll up, let me minimize this, Excuse me. So very good. So the P right the P event is of type I media event. So we're telling the this I media event, which is an interface exposed by the graph. So we're telling the graph get event, give me an event. We're passing it the address of EV code and param one and param two and zero. Now, what is this zero? So if we hover over get event that doesn't do much and control shift space much better so the last parameter here is a long ms timeout timeout in milliseconds all right so the timeout is zero meaning don't wait any time if you don't have an event to give me at this instant then come back right away okay and then we're testing hr if hr succeeded that means we have an event so we can switch on the event, do something with it, and at the end, free the event. We're again telling the event interface, the, um, the, me the iMedia event interface, free event params, handing it over the EV code, param1, param2. Now it's simple enough. And the question is again, why can't we hear anything? So in order to shed some light on this, conundrum let me change this zero millisecond timeout into a one millisecond timeout and let me um, let's do f11 so that it applies the code changes successfully and let's again run f5 so let's test it one, so let's test it one two three finished and let's pause and control alt o to see the output not of the build but of the debug so i guess this is where we last paused the visual studio and since then we ran we got again zero abort but here is a one with an sok and then again, zero abort to the end. All right, so two things. First of all, we were able to hear the graph being played, but it was very jittery. Now, jitter is a very technical term, and you just heard jitter. Jitter is when you hear a short passage of audio and then nothing and then another continuation of the of the original audio that we heard and another part of it and then again nothing and then another part of it nothing it's it's um you could say it's hearing me talking but chopped up chopped up doesn't doesn't shouldn't have any influence because what you're hearing right now is also chopped up the universe is is uh it's we're in a quantum universe we're in, in a universe composed of quantum bits 
It's not a fluid universe like Einstein wanted it to be, but it's a fl- but it's a quantum universe. It's composed of bits of information, and so is digital information. The computer is based on on bits. So being chopped up, that shouldn't cause that shouldn't sound different. But if we take the two any two consecutive chops and we distance them from each other, and in the interim we play complete uh, quiet, complete no sound, so that's what that sounds like. So basically what we were hearing is a playback, stop, playback, stop, playback, stop, and so on. And that is the jitter effect. That's jitter. Alright, so now we know a little bit of what jitter is and we heard what seems to be jitter. And the question is, why did this happen? And notice, when I gave it a zero timeout value, we didn't hear it. And when I gave it one, we didn't hear anything. When I give, give it a one millisecond timeout, we hear jitter. Let's give it a hundred, a tenth of a second timeout. And let's rerun our application. To the fire. So let's test it. One, two, three. Okay, interesting. And this time we also have these results. I don't know why this popped up. Doesn't matter. All right. So what are we seeing? So originally, so the first. Okay. So now I'm using a hundred millisecond milliseconds timeout in my invocation of get event. That means I'm invoking get event. I'm either getting an event or not. And then but if I'm not then I'm then I'm then get event blocks for a tenth of a second. And then I'm continuing my loop, come back to get event. Again if there is nothing for get event to give me, it blocks for a tenth of a second releases control again I come back I call it again and so on and so on and now let's see what the output is so the first time we invoke get event we're getting back this 14 and it's telling us well I see I, I successfully returned from get event so get event has an actual EV code event code number and this 14 actually means something. It's a valid return code. All right, so it probably returned right away. Probably, I don't know, but probably. And then we released all the, all, all the parameters. Very good. And then we again, right away, invoke get event again. This time, we can see that it failed and it returned zero well the zero doesn't it's an invalid number because the, it, the the actual function call was aborted and this actually means it was aborted after the timeout meaning it did not return with an event but rather it had to be aborted by the tenth of a second timeout that's basically what it means by abort if we actually go to the documentation of get event here is get event right button click let's open it in a new tab so get event here are the values so e abort means time out expired interesting so it waited a tenth of a second before it decided I have nothing to give you because I told it I told it wait a tenth of a second before you return either you have an event right that that's what it says in the get event documentation the get event method retrieves the next eventification from the event queue in no ev- if no event is on the queue this method waits up to ms timeout milliseconds for an event to arrive avoid using a timeout interval of infinite because threads cannot process any messages while waiting in get event that's that's true that's our problem. That's our original problem, actually. Threads cannot process, cannot, cannot, it, it's not a proper way to build applications. All right. With the wait and with an infinite timeout get event. All right, but we can see that even a tenth of a second timeout still causes jitter. 
All right, let's, you know what, Let, let's try a one second timeout. I wonder what that's going to sound like. To the file. So let's test it, one, two, three. All right. I don't know if you could hear it, I could certainly hear it. There was jitter. There was a bit, a bit of interruption w once every second. You know what, let's try half a second in order to maybe hear it better to the file. So let's test it, one, two, three. It's, it's difficult to tell, but there is a problem. Let's try 250, a quarter of a second, F5 to the file. So let's test it, one, two, three. Right, so you can certainly feel uh, the, the jitter. All right, so again, the purpose of this code was more in order for us to learn about these values than it was to solve the problem. I'm trying to figure out how to solve the problem, but the first step is to, is to figure out what get event normally returns. So let's for a second concentrate on these values instead of on what we're able to hear. Alright, so what are we seeing? We're seeing that originally when we invoke get event after run, what we see is that there is an event, and the event is 14. After that, we see that there are no events until this is when the graph completes playing the file and then we again have an event and the value is is 1. Now these values 1 and 14 you can actually see if you if you go to the documentation of the function you can see that there are return values available event notification codes and there is a table here without values so if I go to for example EC complete again I don't think they tell you the value here right but if I take EC complete copy it to my code anywhere and just control V F12 then I see that EC complete is my is the one that we receive debug at the end. That's the EC complete. And what is 14? That's a good question. So 14, right, these are hexadecimal values of EC. So for so we know that in, in terms of hexadecimal, 15 is F. So 14 is E. So it's actually EC paused and EC is event code. So event code paused. Where do they explain it? Um, notify application, the previous pause request was completed. But who asked for pause? Right? That's a good question. So a quick answer is that, control alt o is that 14 paused we get initially when we hit run. It just so happens that the way Direct Show was designed is that when we start running a graph, we get an event notification that it has been paused. And that means run. That's the way they did it. And at the end, we're notified one. It's complete. All right. So armed with, with this information that we gathered throughout all this testing, I would like to start using this information to actually solve our problem and have our user interface more responsive. So again, we're going to stop here and we'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.